Broadcasting live from Beacons Ice Arena, it's the first half finale for the UMass Boston Beacons men's hockey team entering today's play undefeated after yesterday's win. They're now 9-0 with a 5-0 conference record. Southern Maine comes to town here in Boston looking to snap a seven-game losing skid. They won their season opener 3-2 over Stonehill, but since then they've yet to win seven straight losses and they've been outscored 29-4. My name's Tyler Murray and I'm joined in the broadcast debut of Carl Poss, one of our directors and a former member of the Beacons hockey team. Great to have you here, Carl. How are you doing, my man? Good to be here, Tyler. Great Great day for hockey. Can't wait to watch this game. Let's check out the statistics for both of these clubs. And you can't really say enough about this Beacons offense so far in 2014-15. In a lot of ways, they're playing better than any hockey team in D3 right now. Yeah, you take a look there. You see six, six goals a game averaging. That is just unbelievable. You don't see that much. Um, you can see the penalty kills doing well at 88%. I'd like to see a little bit more out of the power play at 30%, but... We'll see what we can do today. Now, individually, you look at the team leaders for both sides. The Beacons able to use that top line of Steven Bucco, Mike Kuhn, and Nate Milan, who scored two more goals yesterday to really lead the way. And without those three guys, it could be a different season. That's right. These guys have been leading the way. You've got Mike Kuhn and Nate Milan. Those guys get in the greasy areas and get the puck out to Steven Bucco, and he can shoot the puck with the best of them. About six and a half minutes from puck drop. We've still got time to take a look at the all-time series between these two teams. Southern Maine actually leads 16-10-1 for the Beacons with their recent resurgence. Have won four of the last five matchups. The Huskies haven't won since last season. A pretty impressive W, 6-3. And last season, a 3-2 win for UMass Boston on February 7th. And we do have highlights of that game. We'll have that to you in just a bit as both teams are lining up for starting lineup introductions and the national anthem. While we have time, let's go to our player to watch, Mike Kuhn. And this is a guy you wanted to talk about before the game today, Carl. Yeah, Mike Kuhn, he's a he's a workhorse. He's a gym rat. You see him you see him in there working working every single day. Um, right now he's third in the nation with points with uh, 16, averaging 1.7 points a game. The guy's, he's having a big year, doing it well for his senior year. And we saw both of his line mates, Buko and Milam, rack up three points apiece last night. You said with Kuhn not involved in the scoring on the stat sheet anyway, he might have a little chip on his shoulder to get some points today. Yeah, I'm expecting to see a big game from him. Starting lineups are being introduced, so we'll give those to you right now for the visiting Southern Maine Huskies. We'll have Daniel Matson and Stephen Gallo on the blue line, and it's their top forward line, Brad McGovern, Zach Dymock, and Sam Gimond. As for the Beacons, we'll get to the starting lineups, and they'll tell you who's playing. Peter McIntyre, junior forward uh, from Norfolk, Massachusetts. Colin Larkin, freshman forward, Waterford, Michigan. Frankie DiAgostine, I'm a junior forward from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Tyler Bishop, sophomore defenseman, Rams, New Jersey. Hi, Brett Mason, sophomore defenseman, Raleigh, Massachusetts. Billy Faust, junior goaltender from Alta Loma, California. So you saw there Billy Faust is in net, the junior from Alta Loma, California, making his third start of the season. He's made 38 saves on 44 shots so far this year. He was just introduced. And we're set for the National Anthem. While we honor America here, you can check out the highlights of last season's matchup between these two teams.
So as you saw last year, the Beacons had the advantage 3-2 to two over USM right here at Beacons Ice Arena. What do they have in store for us in the first half finale on the campus of UMass Boston as the Beacons go for their first ever perfect first half under head coach Peter Belisle. They're 9-0 overall, 5-0 in conference play. And Carl, I know you saw a good chunk of that game yesterday, a 3-1 win over UNE. Maybe a slow start for the Beacons, but what was your takeaway from that performance? Yeah, it was a little bit of a slow start. It seemed like middle of the second period they started playing the body a little bit more, and that's when they that's when they started rattling shots on that. Really got, really got UNE on their heels, and... We're able to come away with the win, and that's all that matters. Two let's, points. Let's take a quick look at the keys to the game for this afternoon's showdown, and you see it right there, folks. Give us a quick word on that, Carl, as we've seen the Beacons play so well against great competition and pretty much even with guys they might think are below their talent level. Yeah, sometimes when you get a team that's a little bit below your level, you, you play down to their uh, down to their standards, but these guys got to come out hard and show that they're in the sixth rank, sixth best team in the nation right now. you got to prove it. Tied for their highest ever ranking that came out on Monday. United States College Hockey Online ranked the Beacon sixth, and D3Hockey.com put them at number seven. Loose puck in the corner. We've got hockey here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. UMass Boston in the blue and whites going from left to right across your screen, and the visiting Southern Maine Huskies in the dark blue and gold going from right to left. That one's floated on net where the freshman goaltender Kyle Shapiro puts the glove on it. He's from Ocean, New Jersey. This will be his ninth start of the season. One and seven between the pipes for the Huskies with a 3.75 goals against average, but he had 40 saves last night against number three Babson in a losing effort, 3-0 against the top three ranked Beavers. Here comes one of the tri-captains for USM. It's Cole Klippenstein over the blue line. Quick wrister knocked away by Faust, making his third start of the 2014-15 campaign. Nearly a turnover in front of the net by Brett Mason. He and Tyler Bishop getting the start this afternoon. As we've already got a new line change, it's Milam, Kuhn, and Buko out there, usually the starters, but Peter Belisle started his second line this afternoon. Loose buck at center ice. Milam got his stick on it and has to settle it down. Or it's controlled by Mason. Tape to tape pass for Buko. Gets past one defender. His shot denied. As the goaltender Shapiro knocks it away. Good chance there for UMass Boston. As a hand pass will bring this back towards the blue line. Or in fact just to the right of the goaltender for a faceoff. Yeah, you see Buko there with a little burst of speed. Getting one on net. You like to see that early. 18 minutes, 41 seconds to go in the opening period. And the Beacons win the faceoff. That was Kit Sitterly. Gets it right back. A slap shot kicked away by the goaltender. And back towards the blue line. This one hops into the bench of USM. It'll be another faceoff. And I think already, Carl, we're seeing a more energized Beacon team than what we saw in the opening minutes yesterday when they gave up a very early goal. Definitely. You can see that they're attacking. That was a nice little dish there by Josh to get it over to Kit Sitterly for the one-timer. This time, Jared Beckwith, the freshman from Winthrop, Massachusetts, comes away with the faceoff win. Lost the puck at the center ice line, though, and it's rattled around the boards. Chasing after it is Josh Haverstrom, the freshman. Jeremy Finger in there as well. Puck comes loose to Kit Sitterly. He finds Haverstrom at the hash marks far board side. It's knocked in by Kit. Finger spins away from one defender, shovels one back behind him, hoping to find Haverstrom, but all he finds is Chad O'Brien, the junior for the Huskies. Now Finger goes down to the ice in to help his Sitterly, comes away with the puck, circles around at the circle, goes to Haverstrom, his shot well wide, wrapping all the way around for the former Northeastern Husky, Dan Cornell. Pass in front, wrap around on the doorstep, goes through the crease. Sitterly nearly got a stick on it, but it gets past him and all the way back to Beacon territory. 17.38 to go in the first period. This one banks off the near half boards down below us. It's picked up by Daniel Matson, the junior from Sweden. Nearly lost the handle, but he'll carry this one over his own blue line out towards the Beacon's end. And quickly picked up by Sam Boyd, who sends this one all the way down. No icing called there as Stephen Gallo, one of the tri-captains for the Huskies, picks it up. Didn't possess for long as Derek Colucci takes the body and nearly forced a turnover. A long puck goes off the far boards. That one's picked up by Nick Coda. Coda behind the net. Leaves one even deeper for Alex Toby, who turns and fires. Good kick save there by Billy Faust. Far corner, this is Mike Maciak. Maciak got his stick lifted, but fortunately for him, Sam Boyd was waiting right in the slot. 
Player goes down there. Looks like Al B. Daly might get called for a penalty. Daniel Matson went down, and it's going to be a slash against Daly. Two-minute power play coming up for USM with 16.46 to go. Still no score in the first period. Yeah, as I noted earlier, um, the Beacons have had a tremendous uh, penalty kill so far this year, 88%. Hopefully they can keep that going here. It'll be a face-off to the right of Faust. Milam gets the face-off, but knocks it right to Zach Dymock, who caught it and put it down at his skates. That's Dan Cornell finding a gap in the power play unit of USM, sends it all the way down the ice. Still a minute 45 to go in a man advantage. This is Sam Gimon from Portland, Maine. That's where USM is located. Played with the Portland Junior Pirates. As this puck is taken away by Klippenstein with some space, gliding towards the slot, got knocked away by Milam for a moment, but still able to possess is Brad McGovern. Now Klippenstein's shot knocked away at the point by Milam. Nearly a slash again there over the blue line of USM. A player goes down into the far corner. That's Zach Dymock, but no call there. Just an offside with 16.03 to go in the period and 118 left in the power play. Yeah, the Beacons have so many weapons here on their penalty kill. They've got Mike Kuhn, who, who I will throw out there every once in a while. You've got the speedy guy with Connor McStravick, who will get in those greasy areas and get, get the puck for the guys. Kuhn nearly snuck his way through and had a chance after the faceoff win, but eventually got dispossessed. This is the captain, Kuhn, once again, turns and throws one all the way down. Connor McStravick with great speed wins the race behind the net. Gets there first, able to possess the puck, but here come three Huskies to give him trouble, and he gets leveled from behind by Brett Norman. McStravick slow to get up, but a good effort there just to wind down some penalty clock. 49 seconds left. Now a pass comes near side. Brett Norman with speed over the blue line, gets punished by Tyler Bishop, and the puck squirts loose to the other end. Colin Larkin nearly got a stick on it, but it's kicked away by Todd Bannerman, the sophomore. USM calling for too many men on the ice, but the referees do not oblige. Half a minute to go in the first power play of the day for either team. This is Bannerman. Bishop gets the stick in there and knifes that one away. It comes back out to Stephen Gallo, and the captain can't keep it in. A good clearance there for the Beacons, and with 15 seconds to go in the power play, they'll get a line change. Beacons got lucky there. They had five guys on the ice. That could have been called for too many men, but sometimes, they, sometimes you can sneak it by the referees. Bouncing puck at the hash marks. Mason does well to bank it all the way down as the penalty clock expires. Turnover forced by Larkin. Fine space in the slot. His shot saved by Shapiro. Colin Larkin, the freshman, nearly had a chance for a goal, and there he goes again right in front. Got knocked off the puck, and it's handled easily by Shapiro. But how about the freshman Colin Larkin making an impact, not just in this game, but all season long? Yeah, I t I'll tell you, I was watching him yesterday. This guy's got real silky hands. He can turn your defenseman inside out. Got a great shot, too. He had a great breakaway chance yesterday, but uh, the goalie for U UNE, he just kicked it aside. Off the faceoff win, Peter McIntyre rips one toward the goaltender, but Shapiro is ready for it. And it has not been an easy weekend for the freshman netminder so far. Saved 40 of 43 shots against number three Babson last night. Now playing number six UMass Boston and under fire already. Pass in front from Finger, bouncing towards the far corner, but no one there to find it. Brett Mason slaps that one right back in. No chance to touch up for Larkin unless he wanted to have an offside called. So it's taken out of the zone by USM, but a bad pass at center ice is picked off by Larkin. Nice pass to five. McIntyre pulls up, sends one high into the netting. That one got deflected, though, so it will be an offensive zone faceoff for UMass Boston with wholesale line changes for both teams. 14 minutes and five seconds left in the first period. No score yet. But the lion's share of chances have gone toward the Beacons as Kuhn will take the faceoff. Going against Dario Torres. Kuhn wins it, sends one on, but it's knocked away. Buco tried to shovel that one back in front of the net, but he has it taken off his stick. Mike Maciag at center ice. He's going to rattle this one around the boards. Torres knocks it away for the moment and gets possession back for USM. D to D pass from Klippenstein to Waghorn, intercepted, pass in front, Maciak shoots, saved by Shapiro, rebound shot from Milam is knocked up into the air, it hit off the rafters and the whistle blows. Yeah, the Beacons are pressuring hard right now. 
to go in the first. Once again, the faceoff comes just to the left of the netminder Shapiro. Again, the Huskies looking to snap a seven-game losing streak. They won the opener 3-2 over Stonehill, but have yet to win since then. This is Sam Gamon gets knocked off the puck by Andrew Crawford, who made his 2014-15 debut last night, picked up an assist in the 3-1 win. This one rattles behind the net, picked up by Kuhn, gets pressured there by Gamond, and eventually finds Crawford, who is taken down behind the net. Gamond doing well on the forecheck. Maciag under pressure, but somehow able to shovel it toward the blue line, or it's taken away by Kuhn. Puck winds up behind the net as USM gets the line change. Now this is Crawford. Hands one off to Buco, who saucers a pass towards the near side wall. Finger can't find it. This is Todd Bannerman. Leaves one behind him for Norman. This one's knocked away as Lucas Brennan had a great chance in front, but had it knocked from behind. This is Jeremy Finger now, one on two. Gliding toward the net, turns and centers one. It goes all the way back for Bishop at the point, who knocks one behind the end boards. Finger working hard, forces a turnover. Haverstrom all the way across, but Bishop can't get the stick on it, and it goes right back. This is Norman, the freshman, stops at the circle, sends one through. Faust got a piece of it and covers the rebound. Nice effort from coast to coast there by Brett Norman, and Faust was ready for it, still a 0-0 game. Yeah, it's a good shot there. He's trying to trying to get it on the far side, maybe generate a rebound, but Faust, uh, Faust got that one, covered it right up. It'll be Colucci on the faceoff against Alex Pantsalone, who does lead this USM team with three points in eight games this year. Al B. Daly comes away with it, gets double teamed in the corner. Tried to find Cornell at the point, but it's picked off by Pantalone at the center circle. He looks to go over towards Beckwith. Loose puck, knocked ahead by McStravick. All the way around it comes. A race there between Daly and O'Brien. O'Brien wins it. Puck deflected towards Faust. He covers the puck. And we're seeing a little bit of the tide turning here as USM has got a couple of good chances in the last few minutes. Yeah, USM's bringing a little bit of pressure right now. Let's see if the Beacons can hold off here. Good to see uh, DC Niner Derek Colucci back in the lineup. He had a broken foot all year. Really been rebounding to get back in the lineup and made his first appearance yesterday. So it's good to see Derek. The Huskies win the faceoff. They'll wrap it around the boards, but it's picked up by McStravick. Nice pass up ahead to Daly, just out of his reach, but still plays it off the wall. Good save there by Shapiro on a tough angle slap shot. There goes Torres, who can't make the catch, but able to track it down as he goes towards the end wall. Centering pass on the backhand, looking for Alex Toby. Nearly resulted in a point-blank shot, but he couldn't handle it. Line change for UMass Boston. Pretty even hockey in the last few minutes. The Beacons dominated play in the opening five minutes as Frankie D'Augustine bears down on that pass to the outside post. Kicked away by Shapiro. Peter McIntyre had a chance for a goal. His pass to the point mishandled by Bishop, and the Beacons have to reset. Josh Waghorn makes the catch on that interception. And a line change coming for the Huskies. Now Boyd dumping one in, hoping to find Larkin. Collin gets a stick on it and eventually finds the puck. Protecting it behind the net, lost the handle. D'Augustine comes in to help, and eventually it's taken away by Zach Dymock. He has that one sticked away by Boyd, lost the handle, and now Bishop with it. He lost his left glove. Has to wrap this one around towards the Augustine, but can't get it far enough. Pass through the middle, intercepted by Bishop. Still with just one glove. He's able to stick handle. He'll fire this one in and head to the bench, as will Colin Larkin. Halfway through the first period, still no score. The first goal of last night's game came in the first two minutes for the University of New England. The Beacons tied it up on a goal by Nate Milam 15 minutes later and never looked back. Peter McIntyre from the blue line, saved by Shapiro, and he covers the rebound. Peter McIntyre having quite the season. Three goals, eight assists, top 40 in D3 point scoring. Couldn't quite beat the goaltender there. Yeah, Pete's got a great, great quick shot. Always gets it on that uh, great goal scorer. 
really pure goal scorer. Milam got the first touch on it. Centering pass to Buko. He finds Kuhn, and they score. The top line does it again. Milam to Buko and Kuhn with the finish. 1-0 UMass Boston. What a great passing play right there. You love to see Mikey Kuhn tucking one upstairs. Good goal. Carl Poss, our color analyst today, had a feeling that Mike Kuhn, the captain, would have a big day. Certainly far from over, but he's got to feel good about getting into that point column after being shut out, I suppose, after his two linemates had three points apiece yesterday. Yeah, you see your two linemates have big games and you don't get anything on the score sheet. You want to come back the next day and prove to them that you can get the points too. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first period. UMass Boston has the lead on Kuhn's sixth goal of the season. Milam with 14 assists and Buko with 12, or four assists rather for Milam. He's got 14 points overall this season. And those three skaters are playing as maybe the best line in Division III hockey right now anywhere in the country. The statistics certainly back that up as Milam hoists one towards the slot, but it's knocked down. Buko hits the ice and can't keep it in. Back towards the center ice line it goes, where Brett Mason will take it right back over the blue line. Skates around one defender, wants to wrap it around, fake to pass toward the middle. Now back to the point for Cornell. He's got a rocket. He'll send this one through, deflected by finger, and it goes wide. All the way back around towards the far half boards. Foot race between Toby and Cornell. Dan, the assistant captain, able to win it. Uh, he rifles one through the middle, picked up by Kit Sitterly. Great speed as usual for Kit. At the circle, he'll take it all the way back around. Cycling towards the slot, pass intercepted, intended for Mason, but Dario Torres read it the whole way. Sitterly stays with it, leaves one for Finger. Centering pass for Sitterly, slap shot deflected in front, and it's picked up by Matson. You see Dario Torres putting on a lot of four-check pressure here. Easy got a spot with those long, flowing locks from underneath the helmet. He could be a factor today, Carl. Yeah, Dario Torres is actually a buddy of mine. He, he uh, got changed to a forward when he came here to USM. I played junior hockey with him out in Minnesota. He was a great defenseman, good puck mover, good playmaker. And he's showing off the versatility. As Bishop turns away from a pressuring Diamok. Still has a couple of defenders to deal with, though. Up ahead to Sitterly, who flips one up into the air, hoping Al B. Daly can find room for it. But Matson shields him off and finds Stephen Gallo. That pass deflected at the center ice line by Gamond, freeing up some space for Zach Dymock. Around behind the net it goes, where McStravick is the closest to it, but can't get the stick on it. Colucci hits the ice. A couple of players fighting for it. Bishop and Brennan in on the fray as it goes back behind. Centering pass for Brennan. A near post shot still loose. Faust got the first piece of it, and now it's flicked away on the backhand. That one came all the way out between the hash marks. Good play by the Beacons there to get that out of the zone. Faust, as we said, made the initial save, but had no idea where the rebound went, and how could he with half a dozen players right on top of him. 6.40 to go in the first period. Beacons lead 1-0 on the sixth goal of the season from Captain Mike Kuhn, assisted by Milam and Buka. A top line taking care of business once again. Al B. Daly in transition, whips one over to the far end for McStravick and gets it right back, but a whistle blows for offsides at the blue line. UMass Boston will bring the faceoff right back there with 6.24 to go in the period. A lot of quick plays so far, Carl, as the Beacons are showing a lot more speed than what we saw early yesterday. I think those three unanswered goals towards the end of that game has given them a little bit more confidence entering the first half finale. Yeah, they look good so far. They're moving the puck quickly. They're getting up ice quick. Everything They're going on all cylinders right now. And what it is is it's just all the guys filling their roles out there. Bit of a different look to the starting lineup today anyway. Similar lines. In fact, the exact same skaters, just Billy Faust in goal instead of Zach Andrews. But you saw Mason and Bishop get the starts on the blue line. And the second liners, Larkin, McIntyre, and DeAugustine, skate out first for the forwards. But eventually, it was that top line yet again to start the scoring. This is McIntyre in the slot. Stick handles, but lost the puck. And that's a save for Shapiro. Still 1-0 Beacons in front. Both teams will 
Change out five players apiece. As Boyd and Bishop hit the ice for UMass Boston. And once again, Kuhn, Milam, and Bucco out there for the top forward line. Daniel Matson tried to come away with the faceoff as Kuhn wound up with it. And how about the extra effort there by Shapiro lunging behind the net to cover up the puck after the Kuhn shot went high. Yeah, great job by Shapiro to get that puck and not let any more chances happen. That was a nice shot by Kuhn trying to pick that top corner again. Milam gets the faceoff over to Kuhn, but Mike can't come away with it cleanly. Matson up towards center ice for Gamont. Sam Gamon with some speed, working on Sam Boyd. The puck comes loose to Pantalone. His pass towards the circle, picked off by Milam, and here come the Beacons. Four on three over the blue line, but a good play from behind by Stephen Gallo breaks up the opportunity. Milam still fighting for it. That puck is poked toward Bucco, but he's unable to make the play, and it goes back towards center ice. Into the Beacon zone now, Cornell. Uses his backward skating ability to flick that one up ahead. And it's picked up by Colucci. That's Kuhn, rather. Coast to coast he goes. He sends one across for Bucco, who backhands one to Cornell. Slap pass right back to Bucco. A couple of former Hockey East talents playing catch, but it goes back towards the center logo. Kuhn just pokes that one in and then got leveled by Brett Norman for no reason in particular. And Kuhn goes back to the bench. In favor of Josh Haverstrup. Brett Norman, near side half boards, leaves one back for Bannerman, who sends it on into the beacon zone, and will get it right back. As Bucco comes off, it's the Sitterly line out there now, fingering Haverstrup on the ice, with Cornell and Crawford at the back. Sitterly shovels one in, finger behind the net, puts a hit on Magliano. Bouncing puck past Jared Beckwith. This is Cornell. Gets pressured from his left. Hit shoulder to shoulder. Trying to find the loose puck. Haverstrom comes away with it. Deeks to his right. Backhand pass in front of the net. Knocked away towards the corner. And Finger nearly gets there for the Beacons. Player goes down. That was Lauren Miller who lost an edge. And Finger able to come away with it. Sends it towards Crawford who races after it. Back into the corner it goes. Haverstrom poking at it. Buck is slapped towards the corner on the other end. Now Cornell able to possess, find some room in the high slot, but the puck eludes his stick for the moment, and he has to give it up to Sitterly. Here's a pass right there for Crawford, who zips one just wide to the left of the goaltender, and this one's cleared away. Yeah, I really like what I've been seeing from Josh Haverstrom today. He's really generating a lot of offensive chances for the Beacons. Hopefully he can keep that going. Sitterly swatting at a puck on the stick of Josh Waghorn, but he came up empty. Now Maciag ahead. Towards Finger, now they're able to find McStravick, who backhands one all the way around. Daly puts a hit on a defender behind the net. That was Waghorn. This puck squirts loose towards neutral ice. And once again, this will be Brett Mason to reset things for UMass Boston. Diagonal pass hoping to find Daly is picked off by Chad O'Brien. USM trailing by one. They've been solid defensively ever since, surrendering that first tally, though, as the Beacons try to put on some more pressure. Maciak launches one over the blue line for McStravick. Connor gets there first, turns to his right, has some space at the hash mark, centers one, and it goes off the goaltender Shapiro to the left point. Puck inserted down deep by Mason, but it comes right back to him, bounces over his blade, and Maciak will just dump this one in, and the Beacons get a line change. First man out there is McIntyre. Tried to leave one in for Larkin, but Colin couldn't get the stick down. Still, though, McIntyre gets the puck back. Colin Larkin in on net, but gets the puck chipped away from behind and lost the handle. Waghorn fights the puck away and finds Dario Torres. Skates over both blue lines, protects the puck away from Bishop, but Tyler gets a stick in and forces a turnover where DeAugustine can wrap it around for McIntyre. Puck goes behind Faust, who has not been tested at all lately. After a couple of shots came on him in the first 10 minutes, the Beacons have controlled possession quite nicely in the waning minutes of this first period. Now McIntyre. Lofts one towards center ice, picked up on the skates by DeAugustine. He's got Larkin in front, finds him, backhand shot, kicked away by the goaltender Shapiro. 
Lark that looked just like that one from yesterday. I was going to say the same thing. Larkin got robbed there again. A one-timer from the far end by DeAugustine. Saved by Shapiro. Loose buck in the crease. Goes out towards Bishop. Another save from Shapiro. Sends it sky high. Winds up behind the net a minute to go in the period. The Beacons testing Shapiro as much as they can, but still only one goal across. DeAugustine rips one on net. Knocked back towards the point. Bishop wraps one back around for McIntyre. 45 seconds to go. PMAC working hard to free that one up for Larkin. Now DeAugustine has it, got slashed by the goaltender, turns and fires, but another save from Shapiro. Now back ahead to Larkin. Had it on the backhand, but lost it to Torres. Fortunately for the Beacons, Torres looks gassed out there. Long overdue line change, he'll hit the bench as DeAugustine wanted to catch him on the change, couldn't make the catch, and it goes all the way down for an icing call. 22.8 seconds left in the first period. UMass Boston leads 1-0. What a job by Shapiro right there, making a, making four or five saves right in a row. One of them he was even on his back right there, Tyler. It'll be Buko against Gimond in the circle to the left of Billy Faust. Gimond wins it in the slot. That one's knifed away by Boyd. Neutral ice, Buko flicks one up ahead for Kuhn to direct some traffic on his way to the puck. Got taken down, arm is up, a penalty coming on USM. The Beacons will go on their first power play of the day. Just 10 seconds left in the first. We'll see who goes to the sin bin. Seems like Kuhn had a little bit of frustration built, built up there. He got hit real hard last shift, and uh, he was jawing at the referee when he was going back to the bench, so might have been a little bit of retaliation there. It'll be offsetting penalties or matching two-minute penalties. For a cross check and a slash, Cole Klippenstein and Mike Kuhn hit the penalty box. We'll skate four on four until the end of the period and then for about a minute and 50 seconds at the start of the second. Buko can't win the faceoff. Gallo comes away with it behind the net. Buko tried to center one for Mason, but nobody's home as the clock winds down. On period number one, UMass Boston takes a 1-0 lead into the locker room thanks to Mike Kuhn's sixth goal of the season. Milam got his fourth assist, and Buko tallied helper number 12 to increase his nation-leading point total to 21. The Beacons take a 1-0 lead into intermission number one. Carl, what was your takeaway from the first 20 minutes of hockey? Well, I like what I saw from the Beacons. They were generating a lot of scoring chances. Uh, once again, they're facing a tough goalie here, Shapiro, making tons of stops to bail out Southern Maine. Um, other than that, though, I mean, I think they just got to keep plugging away, and uh, the goals will come. We'll take a commercial break, but stick around, folks. We've got plenty to bring you during the first intermission report. A couple of scoreboard updates around Beaconville. We'll check out some highlights from yesterday's game and an interview with head coach Peter Belisle from earlier today. 1-0 Beacons after one period. This is the Beacons Broadcast Network. Allie Greenberg. I'm an ice hockey player here. I'm a junior majoring in human services and I'm part of the Key for Hope Foundation. We recycle the keys and stock food pantries with the money. I wanted to bring this foundation to the athletic department and I believe we can end hunger starting at UMass Boston. I got started with the Key for Hope Foundation due to my father. He's the one who founded this program. I said what can I do with a classroom environment giving back. And everybody's got an old key, and keys are made of brass, and brass is a recyclable commodity. And thinking about how many children are in a school system and how far we can go with taking this to 
do something right for humanity. I started a foundation called Key for Hope, feeding others uh, with the collecting of keys. In two and a half years, we collected over half a million keys. And I'm excited about this whole opportunity because you know what? One key may not seem like much to most people, but when you collect the masses of keys that we've collected, it shows that there is an ability for people to get together and create what I'm considering our hunger fighting opportunity. Back live in Boston, one nothing Beacons. Couple of stats for you. We'll break them down in full in just a moment, but a pretty good first period in net for Kyle Shapiro. 18 saves on 19 shots. Billy Faust made six saves on six shots. Four on four hockey, still a minute 50 to go in the fast lane freeway style with two penalties coming, one on Kuhn and the other on Klippenstein at the very end of that first period. Still about 12 minutes to go before we get you set for period number two. So let's take a minute to revisit yesterday's win for the Beacons, a 3-1 to -one victory over the University of New England right here at Beacons Ice Arena. record to 9-0 and overall. They're still perfect in conference play as well. 5-0 and in ECAC East play. It's their best start in program history and so far so good in terms of chasing down that perfect first half. A 1-0 lead here after 20 minutes of hockey hosting the University of Southern Maine. Remember folks, this is the last Beacons men's hockey game until 2015. They'll be back here on January 4th for the Codfish Bowl. So a bit of a long hiatus from UMass Boston hockey after today's game comes to an end. We've got Peter Belisle's interview ready for you as he had a lot of good takeaways from yesterday's win over UNE leading into today's ECAC East showdown with Southern Maine. exciting win last night for the Beacons 3-1 to one over UNE. What were your takeaways from that game? Well, I thought we played well. Uh, I know we put a lot of shots on, on their goaltender. Um, you know, and I, I don't think we're still shooting enough, but uh, I liked our effort. And, you know, the puck didn't go in the net as much as we would have liked, but uh, you know, all in all, it was a tight game with, you know, going into that third period. It was 1-1, one, one, and uh, we found a way, so uh, a very positive uh, evening for us. You've got Southern Maine in the building today. It'll be your last game until January 4th when we start the Codfish Bowl. How important is it to you to get this first half finished on a high note? Definitely. Uh, you know, you want to leave, you know, for break and for exams with a good taste in your mouth. So today's as big as any of the, game, the nine previous games we've had. So this is uh, a big one today against a league rival. Uh, and it's certainly not going to be easy, and, and we've got to come ready to play. Another good night from Zach Andrews yesterday, but Billy Faust in between the pipes today. What are you looking for out of Billy uh, in goal? 
they're both playing well, uh, and I want to give Billy another game because uh, he deserves it. Uh, Zach played outstanding last night. Uh, we've got two capable goalies, uh, you know, as I s said in the past, and uh, I think it's just good to get Billy some work before uh, we take off so everybody's feeling good about themselves, hopefully, uh, a as we go into the exam break. What did you think about Andrew Crawford and Derek Colucci making their debuts yesterday? Oh, I thought they were great. Uh, I thought Andrew Crawford was... Uh, excellent back there. He was paired with Danny Cornell, and uh, I thought Andrew really kept it simple, and that's his game. Uh, I thought he played outstanding. And same thing for Derek. Uh, Derek Colucci played, uh, you know, outstanding. Uh, we didn't skip a beat, and I think that, you know, speaks to our depth that we have. And those guys, uh, you know, are very experienced players, so uh, they showed it last night. Our thanks, as always, to head coach Peter Belial. We hope to talk to him after this afternoon's game as the Beacons wrap up the first half of the 2014-15 regular season. Let's take a look around Beaconville right now, in fact. Our very own Seth Lorensky is live at the Reggie Lewis Center for the third annual UMass Boston Indoor Track and Field Open. A very unique experience if you've gotten used to tuning into Beacon soccer, hockey, volleyball, basketball, and everything in between here on BeaconsAthletics.com. A track meet broadcasted live by Seth Lorensky. A lot of fun to tune into that earlier today, and he'll be doing it all day long from the Reggie Lewis Center in Roxbury, Massachusetts. We'll take a quick break, then come back to break down the first period stats with Carl Poss right after this. You're listening and watching the Beacons Broadcast Network. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school. But every second isn't worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where I'm taking in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division III. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. The University of Massachusetts Boston, with its scenic oceanfront campus, Easily accessible to downtown Boston is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III sports are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division III school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. Back live in Boston, Tyler Murray, Carl Poss with you live from Beacons Ice Arena. Four minutes until we drop the puck for period number two. Let's take a look at the stats from the opening period. Of course, the Beacons were able to get the lone goal, but Carl, what did you see in those first 20 minutes that the stats reflect? Yeah, well, you can see there that the Beacons got 19 shots on that, really peppering uh, the U I mean Southern Maine. Um, no power plays yet, couple penalties. Overall, kind of a boring period, but at the end of the day, they're still up one nothing. Good job to kill off that one penalty, and as we said, the teams will skate four on four for the first one minute and 50 seconds of the second period. Now, we saw yesterday, Carl, the Beacons went 0 for 5 on the power play, but before the game, and we just saw the interview, Peter Belisle said it was one of the most encouraging power plays he had seen all season. A lot of good puck movement, a lot of open shots. They just couldn't find the net. 
How impressed have you been with the power play so far this year and both ends of the special, te or special teams play for the Beacons? Yeah, I mean, the Beacons are unbelievable at moving the puck, and they set up that umbrella, umbrella offense on the power play, and they work the puck to the middle so they can get some good hard shots on net, maybe generate some rebounds. Overall, I've liked what I've seen from them. It's just, I mean, sometimes the puck just doesn't go your way on the power play. Two minutes and 45 seconds until we drop the puck once again. And we can take a look on what other, at what other games are going on in ECAC East play. They're not yet underway, but the University of New England is going through the same grinding weekend as USM has had to deal with playing both number six UMass Boston and number three Babson. Of course, Beacons fans will be rooting for UNE in that game. And don't forget, UNE, the Nor'easters, were able to beat Babson last season. Pretty impressive to be able to knock off one of the top teams in D3. But you know, Carl, that if there's one team UMass Boston still has in their crosshairs, one team they know they need to beat to reach that next level of success, it is Babson College. Oh, yeah. I mean, same team that's kicked them out the last two years. You hear it all year. You hear it all summer. These guys are always talking about Babson. Um, all they want to do is beat that team. They've got a really good goalie in Jamie Murray. He's been stopping everything this year. I mean, I can't wait to watch those two face off. It's going to be something to see. What are you looking for in this second period as the players are just about set to retake the ice? You talked about how well Kyle Shapiro was able to play in the first period. And Peter McIntyre had a lot of shots in that first frame as well. If he can keep putting the puck on net, only a matter of time, I'm sure, before he finds the back. Yeah, three shots for him in the first period. He did well. Um, I mean, pretty much they just got to keep plugging away, keep getting those pucks to the net, getting into those dirty areas, and, uh, you know, the puck will bounce your way. The more you shoot, the more likely you are to get some goals. The lone goal in this game came from UMass Boston at 10-22 into the first period. Mike Kuhn scored his sixth of the season as Stephen Bucco got his 12th assist, and Nathan Milam had his fourth assist of the season. And we've seen some eye-popping numbers this year from UMass Boston. And you can take plus-minus numbers with a grain of salt, but Mike Kuhn now has a plus-19 this season in about nine and a third game so far in 2014-15. Not just leading in terms of wearing that C on his jersey, but the captain Mike Kuhn leading by example. And I think, Carl, a good pick for our player to watch today. Definitely. I mean, you look at plus-minus, that says more even more about the defense and the offense. I mean, you you got to go out there and play a good defensive game to keep your plus minus up. And th this line's been doing it all year. I mean, most of the time they're not even in the defensive end because they're down cycling the puck around in the offensive zone, finding Steven Bucco to get some shots on net. I mean, th this line has just been unbelievable this year. The teams will switch sides. Now it's UMass Boston going from right to left in the blue and white. And for USM, they're going left to right. They've got the dark blue, gold, and white uniforms down on the ice at Beacons Ice Arena. Remember, it's four-on-four four hockey for another minute and 50 seconds as UMass Boston will send out Cornell, Mason, Milam, and Bucco. As for the Huskies, they've got Gallo, Torres, Dymock, Matson. And McGovern. Puck ready to be dropped here. A fresh 20 on the clock for the second period. And we're underway. 1-0 Beacons on the goal from Mike Kuhn halfway through the first period. We'll see if they can add to that total as it banks off the far wall. Four on four hockey. Give and go. McGovern finds Dymock and a shot sticked into the air by Faust. It finds the netting and a faceoff upcoming. Quick start there for USM. Their head coach, Jeff Beeney, in his 28th year behind the bench. Looking to reignite his team in search of their first win since the season opener. They're 1-7 overall and have yet to win in any of their six ECAC East games this season. And even worse, they've been outscored now 26-1 in every conference game. This puck deflected towards the net. Bucco nearly had a goal, but it goes wide. And Shapiro... Knocks the net off its moorings with still a minute 16 to go in the four on four, but a big scare there for USM. Yeah, Steven Bucco just, just resting one on net from anywhere. I mean, he's always finding the net, and you see what happens. I mean, little rebound right there. Nate Milam almost tucked it in. Looks like we've got 
Milam headed for the penalty box, though, on that collision with Shapiro, the goaltender. So four on three is imminent as the referees discuss things here. Peter Belial, the Beacons coach, wants an explanation, but there was a pretty heavy hit on Shapiro, the goaltender, which caused the net to become dislodged. Yeah, Nate was just going hard to the net right there. Uh, seemed to get tangled up with Shapiro a little bit. Um, I mean, no matter what, if you hit the goal, you're most likely going to get a penalty. So just three beacons on the ice right now, Daly, Cornell, and Boyd. Two defensemen and a forward. As for USM, who has one minute and 16 seconds of a four on three, they've got Bannerman out there who just won the faceoff. This is Daniel Matson, the Swede. Gets it to the top of the circle for Norman. Uh, Matson has it right back, faked a slap shot, goes into the corner where he finds his captain, Stephen Gallo. Matson has it right back. Now this is Norman. Matson in the slot. Over to Gallo, who slaps one well wide of Faust and is picked up by Cornell, who stuffs one towards the corner. Nice play there by Daly to smack that one all the way down. 47 seconds to go in the four on three. Well, it'll be a good old-fashioned power play for USM as Daly has it, turns and fires. All the way down it goes. Al B. Daly, quite the penalty killer thus far. Yeah, he's a fantastic penalty killer. He's a spark plug out there. I mean, he throws the body around. He can get those loose pucks and get it down to the other end. Great Put, player. Putting pressure on Stephen Gallo, but it turns into a three-on-two for the Huskies. Far side circle. This is Bannerman wrapping around, but he lost the handle. Into the corner it goes. McGovern. Gets it right back at the circle. His shot deflected. And a good block by Sam Boyd. Up top for Matson. Five seconds to go in the four on three. The shot goes well wide as the penalty clock expires. Matson winds up and fires. Good block there by Daly. And Boyd got a piece of it too. And now Boyd hits it off the glass to clear the zone. Back onto the ice comes McStravick. Still half a minute left in the Milam penalty. So five on four power play here for the Huskies as Boyd races after this one. Gets it around towards McStravick, but it bounces funkily off the corner boards, and it's taken right back by the Huskies. McGovern chasing after the puck, tries to shield off Boyd, and he finds possession. Up top for Dymock. D-to-D -D pass, a one-timer, deflected in front, still loose in the slot. One save by Faust. The puck is still loose. Behind the net it goes, and Norman has it. This is Brett Norman, wraparound backhander. Faust is there to handle a tough angle shot, and he covers up as the second penalty expires. The Beacons killed off a four on three and a five on four to open this second period. Good killing there. Uh, pretty solid power play by USM, though. I mean, they were working the puck around, got a few good chances there. Uh, Faust, was, Faust was just up for the challenge, though. 17-23 to go in the second period. Larkin lost the faceoff. But the Beacons able to possess with Andrew Crawford, a junior from Medford, Mass, who made his 2014-15 debut yesterday. This is Klippenstein. Pass over to Pantalone, who turned one ahead for O'Brien, but Chad can't make the play. Puts a hit on Crawford to make up for it, though, and nearly forced a turnover. Another hit there put on by Alex Toby, but UMass Boston comes away as DeAugustine finds McIntyre. Pass right back to DeAugustine, sent behind the net for PMAC. This shot skips over the back of the net and wound up at the hash marks, but eventually taken away by O'Brien. Shielding the puck, got away from one defender, and a big hit put on there by Crawford. He will get called for interference, though at the near side boards over the blue line. Yeah, Crawford playing very physical out there. It's good to see him back in the lineup. He's a big body, really good D-man. So but, another power play upcoming. But uh, yeah, he's gonna go to the box there. Interference. Um, the Beacons have yet to have a man up in this one. As they lose a faceoff, Diamock goes DDD for Klippenstein, gets it right back, zips one towards net, but it goes wide. Faust didn't see it, but fortunately for him, it was off target. Puck goes into the USM bench off the stick of McStravick. It'll be a neutral zone faceoff. A minute 47 to go in the power play. 16 and a half minutes left in the period, 1-0 Beacons. This is Gimond. Facing off against Daly, and Gamond comes away with it. 
Klippenstein just past the blue line. Squirts one ahead for Gamond. He tried to play catch, but it winds up being a good clearance for UMass Boston. Shapiro plays it. Daly putting on some more forecheck pressure on the PK, but can't quite get the stick on it. And it goes back to Mason. Slings one across for Cornell. Saucers one all the way down for Daly. Couldn't complete the catch, but works just fine for a dump. As the Beacons able to clear once again, a minute 15 to go in the power play. Yeah, good idea there by Cornell to try and hit Alby for the uh, for a little offensive yeah. offensive pressure on the uh, penalty kill here. McGovern trying to go coast to coast, slipped it through a couple of defenders, but it went too far, and it's easily covered by Faust. 66 seconds left on the penalty. Crawford for interference, still waiting in the sin bin. Beacon struggling in the faceoff circle. So far in the second period, if they come away with possession, as Colucci can't possess, Milam passes it to him on the backhand, but no connection. Here comes USM, a shot from the high slot by Brandon is kicked away by Milam, whose stick broke. A fluttering pass towards the point, Miller goes to the circle, a quick wrister kicked away by Faust, deflected in front off of Brandon, but still the goaltender was ready for it. 33 seconds left in the man advantage for USM. Lorne Miller has it, gets around Milam. His shot goes wide, bouncing puck towards the corner. Milam turns and knocks it up ahead. This is Colucci off to the races, but he can't get there in time. It was Brett Norman who won the foot race, and then he puts a hit on Colucci. Looked a bit gassed after some good penalty killing during this power play. Yeah, you can see that they're trying out Colucci on the penalty kill on uh, just his second game back here. He was a huge penalty kill guy for the for the Beacons last year, so it's good to see him back out there working hard, blocking shots. High sticking cold against USM, so a neutral zone faceoff coming up. The Beacons five seconds away from killing off yet another penalty. It'll be one of their better faceoff men, Colin Larkin, at the dot, and he gets himself a win, but the Beacons surrender possession right back. They have killed off the penalty, though. Center ice pass goes to Magliano. Near side for Pantalo. Double teamed in the corner. Larkin got there first, being assisted by Mason, and Colin, the freshman, comes away with it. Rifles a pass all the way ahead in hopes of connecting with the Augustine. Frankie works hard to get the puck out of the reach of Matson, but then he hits the ice and loses possession. And now Larkin wins it back. Pass near side to Mason, who sends one on, but it's saved by Shapiro. A good glove there. And with 14.06 to go, it'll be a face-off in front of the goaltender. Yeah, it's a good good hard shot there from Mason. Getting one to the net, but uh, he was able to cover it up. This is Kit Sitterly at the dot. Wins it from Torres. A quick shot from Crawford at the top of the circle. But he was off target. Jeremy Finger shielding the puck from Josh Waghorn. Finger almost found Haverstrom in the slot, but the pass goes behind him, and Torres comes away with the puck. Crawford gets there first, wraps one around, or he's able to find Haverstrom. Sitterly now back to Crawford, ahead to Finger. Sitterly was streaking through the middle of the ice, but instead they'll go to the near side boards, or Haverstrom will set this one in. Loose puck behind the cage. Haverstrom leaves it back for Sitterly. Tried to deke back behind the net, but loses the handle. Now it's left for Finger. Jeremy Finger slips past one defender, turns around, gets it to Haverstrom, right back to Finger, near side, loose puck in the slot, still alive, backhand shot denied by Sitterly. Couldn't get it off cleanly, and USM survives for the time being. Sitterly finds Haverstrom. Good shift from this third line so far. Haverstrom to Sitterly, they score! The persistence pays off, and the Beacons have doubled their lead. 2 nothing UMass Boston on Kit Sitterly's seventh goal of the season. Great stick handling there by Josh Haverstrom. Uh, able to get around that, do a little dipsy doodle move around that defenseman and get it back door to Kit Sitterly for the tap-in. Wouldn't be surprised if Jeremy Finger gets an assist as well with as well as those three were passing the puck. 
Yeah, you saw Jeremy Finger there in his natural habitat behind the net. The guy is, he's one of the strongest kids I've ever played with. And uh, I, can, I can still remember during tryouts him just manhandling me behind the net. The kid is just a beast with the puck behind the net. They will give an assist to Jeremy Finger. That's his 10th point of the season. He scored four goals in that 15-3 win over UMass Dartmouth. Hasn't scored since, but certainly been a very impressive contributor. 2-0 Beacons, 12 minutes to go in the middle period. They've certainly rewarded themselves for killing off all these penalties. Both goals coming at even strength, but when it's 5-on-5, five five, you see the talent differential for UMass Boston. As they're going to get whistled, it looks like, for a slash. We'll see who they get with it. Number 37, Sam Gimond for USM, who slams the Sinbin door on his way down. The Beacons have their first power play opportunity. Larkin wins it back to Bucco. Quick pass, he gets it right back from Cornell. Walks towards the point, now cycles in. Shovels one behind where he finds McIntyre. P. Mack with all kinds of room sends one toward the net, but it's deflected away by O'Brien. Now Bucco cycles around, hit the post as Shapiro lunged for it, but the post was ready for it behind him. Right there you got a little taste of the accuracy that Steven Bucco has on that shot, trying to pick that top left corner, just missed. Here's Chad O'Brien in on net, gets taken down from behind by McIntyre, saved a goal scoring chance there. Here comes P. Mack the other way, one on two, gets around both defenders and takes down the goalie. Loose puck behind the net. Shapiro does not have a stick. McIntyre couldn't center it inside to Milam, and the Beacons have a chance to go by the wayside. Now a penalty upcoming. It looks like against USM. Yeah, Shapiro lost his head right there. Uh, threw the blocker at Nate Milam out in front. He's going to get called for that. Uh, once USM touches up, it should be a five on three. Right now, a six on four as still a stickless Shapiro gloves it. Now hurls the puck down the ice. And he gets a talking to from the referee. That's not a friendly conversation at all. No, he's not happy out there. That's for sure. So it should be 48 seconds of a two-man advantage for UMass Boston. They've got goals from Kuhn and Sitterly. Buko, Finger, Haverstrom, and Milam all have assists. And the Beacons will send Sitterly, Finger, DeAugustine, Mason, and Bishop out there. And they've only got two skaters for the Huskies right now, Klippenstein and Coda. Now the Beacons are going to want to spread out right here, move the puck around, get these USM guys moving back and forth and make some open lanes so they can get some good hard shots on net. Still not halfway through this game. The Beacons have certainly had a high level of intensity throughout, but only two goals to show for it. You wonder if they can capitalize on this apparent five on three. We're still waiting for the referees to sort this out. As the Huskies were deciding who's going to take the two minute penalty for the goaltender, Shapira. USM has four men on the ice right now. Should only be three. They will send off Coda. Well, one of their tri captains, Stephen Gallo, will take the face off. Daniel Matson joins the fray as well. Bishop goes to Mason. Brett gives it right back to Tyler. They continue to play to catch D to D. Five on three for the Beacon. Centering pass. They score. Right across the box. Frankie D'Augustine finishes. It's 3 nothing. UMass Boston. What a pass by Kit Sitterly there. It all started with him, too, winning that faceoff so clean. Beacons were able to get the puck out to the blue line, get themselves in position. They got the puck back down to Kit Sitterly. 
Sent it across the crease to Frankie D'Augustine back door for the tap-in. It's his fourth goal of the season and a power play goal for the Beacons. They still have a five on four man advantage, 1.48 to go in that power play. As you can see, the talented goaltender Shapiro getting a bit frustrated. Man, Sitterly's really flying out here. He's all over the place. D'Augustine at the hash marks. D to D over for Mason. Up top for Bishop. Sends one all the way through, deflected up high into the netting. Face off coming. They've given Brett Mason the secondary assist on that goal, so he and Sitterly collect helpers on that play. So Kitt has two points on the afternoon after scoring the Beacon's second goal. Still a minute 20 left in the Beacon's power play. This is Cornell. Back pedals towards the high slot, gets it right back from the circle from McIntyre. He returns the favor. B Mac walking towards the slot. Lost the handle, a good block there by Chad O'Brien, who sends it all the way down. 60 seconds to go in the power play. Faust controls behind the net. Backhands one forward, and it's picked up by Buko. Nice feed where he's able to find McIntyre, three on three. Back to Larkin. Here comes Buko over the blue line to help out. They find him in the slot. He shoots off the far post. Can't believe it. And it goes over to McIntyre. That's two posts for Steven Buko in the last five minutes. He's due. p has got room. Faked a slap shot. Goes over to Cornell. He thought about a slapper as well, but instead goes to McIntyre. 25 seconds to go in the power play. Now Cornell's got room. Walks in, finds Larkin. He shoots, but it's knocked down by Matson. All the way back to center ice it goes. 15 seconds left in the Beacon second power play. They're one for one thus far. Now Larkin stops on a dime, whiffed on the pass attempt several times and just scuttles this one back towards center ice where Cornell can pick it up. Deflected by Buko in toward Shapiro and the penalty is killed off, but the Beacon's able to capitalize on the initial five on three to extend their lead to where it currently is three nothing in the second period. Yeah, I'm sure Belisle's going to be happy to see some power play success right there after going 0 for 5 yesterday. Bouncing puck, rolling toward Shapiro. Buko races after it. Right behind him is Colucci coming in to help. Is Albi Daly. That's a stick on the puck, but it's kicked away that time by Jared Beckwith. The center ice it goes. Gimon turns and dumps one in. And I think will be the call. The Beacons will bring this one all the way back down. So a seemingly comfortable lead, especially with UMass Boston hosting a Husky team that averages less than one goal per game, 0.88 to be exact. They've got the talent to turn it around, but the way the Beacons have played this season, it certainly will be a tall task for USM to come back. Yeah, USM's been having troubles putting the puck in the back of the net all year with only seven goals on the season. As a total, I mean, the Beacons, the Beacons put up 14 goals in their first game. Nick Stravick drew a cross check as he got tangled up at the near side half boards. Todd Bannerman talking to the officials, hoping to plead his case, but to no avail. And yet again, the Beacons going on the power play. Didn't have any opportunities with a man advantage in the first half of this game, but already in the last five minutes, they've had three power plays. You love to see McStravick getting under the skin of the other guys. He's really good at that. He's a big chirper, big, big time talker in the locker room too. The guys really love him. He's one of those guys that you hate to play against, but you love to have him on your team. A quick clearance there by the Huskies. Torres puts on four check pressure, but the Beacons avoid it. Buko couldn't track that one down, but the Beacons able to possess near the blue line, finger. Bats one in where he's hoping to find Sitterly, but it's quickly taken away and sent all the way down by Lauren Miller. Faust had to play that one and just drags it back for D'Augustine. Now Sitterly all the way across. D'Augustine sends one a bit too high, bounces all the way around for Mason. Mason and D'Augustine fighting for the puck momentarily. Now Brett comes away with it and goes to D'Augustine. 
Walks toward the slot. Quick shot knocked down by a beacon. That was Jeremy Finger who got the biggest piece of that one off the shin and it's cleared away by the Huskies. Still a minute left on this power play. The Beacons went 0 for 5 yesterday with a man advantage, but head coach Peter Belisle said it was the most encouraging power plays he'd seen all season. Cornell slaps a pass near side. Bucco hits his third post of the day and gets the rebound right back. No look pass down low for Milam. His shot denied by Shapiro. Loose puck in between the circles. Players jabbing for it, and it just scores past the left post. And the whistle blows behind the net. Dead puck. It's got to be eating up Buko right now. Three posts in the last five minutes. Um, I mean, I'll say it again. The kid is due. He was able to score the nail in the coffin goal yesterday, an empty netter to make it 3-1. to one. Tacked on two assists as well on Nate Milam goals. Nearly assisted another goal from Milam. Who got shut down at the doorstep by Shapiro. 20 seconds left in the power play. Guimon sends it through. Cornell will race after this one as three out of the four USM skaters come off for a line change. With good speed, this is Larkin. From blue line to blue line he goes, gets leveled. Puck is left behind him off the left post this time as Milam gets denied. As the penalty clock expires, this pass all the way down, past two lines, will be ruled an icing, and they'll bring it back to the Beacons' offensive end. So 5.45 to go in the second. 3-0, Beacons in control here, as the frustration has been building ever since it became a 2-0 lead. The Huskies doing their best to keep their composure, but UMass Boston imposing its will during period number two. Home run pass all the way through for Brandon. He can't get it. That'll be yet another icing, and we'll do it all over again. I noticed that Peter Belisle changed up the uh, power play unit there, his first unit. Yesterday they had Mikey Kuhn going, and uh, they seemed to switch it out and put Nate in that in his spot. Uh, I guess he might just be going with the guy that's hot. I don't know. But Nate had a good scoring opportunity there. Now a quick whistle off the faceoff win for UMass Boston. High stick it looked like. Oh, no interference. Beg your pardon. Now after the Beacons had played so disciplined for the first part of this period, Connor McStravick is headed to the sin bin for two minutes. We'll bring it all the way down. In front of Faust. Guimond and Colucci get tied up off the faceoff. And Cornell comes away with it. He will float one all the way down where Daly sprints against Klippenstein. Daly gets the inside track, but too many skaters out there for USM. Dymock takes it away from behind. They've got numbers on the rush. Good defense there by Cornell to force the puck into the corner. Daly lost it away from McGovern. Klippenstein at the point. Right back to McGovern. Gimon cycles up top. Klippenstein goes near side for Dymock. Gets it right back. One time slap shot. Goes wide. Bounced up and over the net. And landed at the circle. But the Beacon's able to send it back towards the corner. And that time a puck goes into the netting. Backhanded by Alex Toby been some strange bounces in this defensive end this period. Earlier we had that one, they tried to wrap it around the boards and it uh, came right back right back towards Faust and then right there that one bounced off the backboards and went over the net into the slot. Colucci, Crawford, Cornell, and Daly on the penalty kill unit for UMass Boston. This is Dymock. Goes to Klippenstein. The Huskies very patient on this power play. Still a minute to go in the man advantage. McGovern goes behind for Gamond. Now back to Klippenstein. He's able to find Dybach who rifles one through. He scores. Deflected in front. We'll see who gets credit for it. But USM is on the board. 3-1. to one. Beacon still lead. Yeah, it was a good play there. Um, working the puck up high and uh, got a good shot there from... 
Uh, Zach Dimick get, getting a low shot on net. It seemed, seemed like uh, Faust was unable to find it. Slipped right between his legs. It's a power play goal for the Huskies. Just their second power play tally of the season. They were one for 26 entering this game. Dimock will get the goal, and Klippenstein gets the assist, as well as Givant. Beacons looking to answer. Bouncing puck in the crease, knocked away towards center ice at the far boards, and batted right back in by Bishop. Well, Dimock gets his second goal of the season, had six goals and five assists last year. First point of the season for Klippenstein, and Gamon gets assist number two. They're looking for more here. Three on three over the blue line. Shot by Norman, knocked away. And it comes to McIntyre right below us. P-Mac walks in behind for Larkin. His shot saved by Shapiro, who hangs on with 3.22 to go in the period. At the very least... Some momentum may be building for USM after that last goal to prove to themselves they know how to get past Billy Faust. Yeah, I mean, the team's been struggling to put pucks in the back of the net. I mean, you got to love, love to get a big goal in this big game against a really good team, really good goalie. Masiak lost the handle. It's Magliano with it to the far end where Toby goes down. Loose puck at the Beacons right circle. Buko tries to flick it up ahead. He and Milam will give chase into the corner. Good job there by Pantalone to free the puck up, but Haverstrom comes away with it. Tries to center for Milam, but instead it winds up with Mason back at the point. Goes to Macia, who flutters one through. It goes to the left of the goaltender and wrapped back around. Good keep in there from Macia. Sends it to the opposite corner. Player goes down. That was Gallo, but gets right back up. Maciaga getting the point, man. Sends it off the back wall. Buko tried to center one for Milam, but Nate has to track the deflection down at the opposite wall. Able to find Buko around the boards. Milam waiting in the slot. Pass deflected up and over a streaking Maciag, and this one's cleared down by Pantolo. I'm Good. thinking there might be something wrong with Mike Kuhn here. Um, I, you see that Josh Haverstrom took his took his spot on that line right there, and as I was saying earlier, he wasn't on the power play. Um. Three to one. Beacons in front, but momentum might be swinging toward the Huskies, who have scored the last goal in this game. It was three nothing Beacons just a moment ago. Airborne puck is knocked down by the glove of D'Augustine, but quickly picked up by the Huskies. That was McGovern with the quick stick. He slaps one back to Waghorn, who's able to find Klippenstein in front of his own net. A good blocked pass that time by D'Augustine. Couldn't find the puck at first, but now chips it in. But it's given right back. Dimock, who scored the Husky goal, goes over the blue line in search of his teammate Brad McGovern. And Klippenstein takes a hit at center ice, and it goes to Waghorn. Now Cornell back behind for Crawford. McIntyre, long distance pass for D'Augustine. Frankie finds the handle, turns around, backhand pass, looking for McIntyre, but well behind him, picked off, and here comes Lucas Braden, two on two. He's got Bannerman in the slot, but they were offsides. And the chance goes by the wayside. A minute 12 to go in the second. Speakin still lead it three to one. Remember, it's the last UMass Boston men's hockey game until January 4th when they take on Connecticut College in the Codfish Bowl. Yeah, it'll be nice for these guys to get a little break. They've been off to a really great start this season. Um, I think it'll be nice for them all to maybe go home for the holidays, see their families, and then come back, get back to work for the second half of the season. The real end to the calendar year, though, has to be those final exams at UMass Boston. I hear they're quite difficult. That's for sure. We've been grinding it out all week. Best of luck, of course, to our staff and crew. Carl Poss, the man to my right, Jose Pena, Charles Lai, 
Jason Cholish and the whole gang. Shot from the right point, knocked down off the stick of Daly. And it goes back toward the beacon zone where Sam Boyd can pick it up. Now he finds Buko, who stick handles. Oh, that's Daly, rather. LB Daly missed wide. And it winds up with Colucci. McStravick taps one over for Daly. Spins around. Near side post. Loose puck. Lost the handle. Colucci sends one toward Shapiro, who makes a diving save. But before the shot went off, the whistle blew. 27 seconds left in the period. It'll be a faceoff to the right of Shapiro, the goaltender. We've got plenty to bring you during the second intermission, including highlights of the Beacon's alumni hockey game. Sitterly blindly backhand one towards the crease. It's taken away, but Kit gets it right back over the blue line. Haverstrom from the circle. He's denied by Shapiro, who takes several steps away from the crease to show off the glove. A good save, though. To keep this in a two-goal game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this line, this line of Jeremy Finger, Kit Sitterly, and uh, Josh Haverstrom have just been creating a lot of chances tonight. Uh, Haverstrom has been having a great game. He's getting a lot of pucks to the net. Uh, very showing a lot of speed out there. Same with Kit. Finger's always doing his job down in the corners. Good stuff. Cornell reinserts the puck into the offensive zone. Now Mason dragging one behind the net. Cornell comes in to pinch, but time expires in period number two. So the Beacons had a 1-0 lead after 20 minutes, and after two periods, they lead 3-1. Goals from DeAugustine, Sitterly, and Kuhn have the Beacons just 20 minutes away from their first ever perfect first half of the season, hoping to go 10-0 overall and 6-0 in conference play. A couple more goals in that period, Carl. What would you see? Yeah, yeah, I mean... Good offense. They're moving the puck well. They're skating well. Um, like to see a little bit more on the power play. I mean, they had they had that five on long five on three there. They were able to put one in. Would have liked to see another one. But overall, I mean, I like what I'm seeing from the Beacons. We'll take a break and come right back with the second intermission report. A two-goal lead for the Beacons. This is the Beacons Broadcast Network. My name is Allie Greenberg. I'm an ice hockey player here. I'm a junior, majoring in human services, and I'm part of the Key for Hope Foundation. We recycle the keys and stock food pantries with the money. I wanted to bring this foundation to the athletic department, and I believe we can end hunger starting at UMass Boston. I got started with the Key for Hope Foundation due to my father. He's the one who founded this program. I said, what can I do? with a classroom environment giving back. And everybody's got an old key, and keys are made of brass, and brass is a recyclable commodity. And thinking about how many children are in a school system and how far we can go with taking this to do something right for humanity, I started a foundation called Key for Hope, feeding others uh, with the collecting of keys. In two and a half years, we collected over half a million keys. And I'm excited about this whole opportunity because you know what? One key may not seem like much to most people, but when you collect the masses of keys that we've collected, it shows that there is an ability for people to get together and create what I'm considering our hunger fighting opportunity. 12 minutes and 25 seconds until we get back to live hockey. We do have quite the highlight reel to show you from the recently played hockey alumni game here. We've got players from the way back when it was Boston State instead of UMass Boston, and from recent seasons, like in goal, you're able to see a couple of highlights from Matt 
Meisenbacher, who is our color analyst for several games here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. But check out the highlights of a very fun day at the men's hockey alumni game. and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Beacon. I'm your host, Haley Dutton. Fresh off their best start in program history, number 10 UMass Boston's men's ice hockey team hosted their first annual alumni game since the 2011-2012 season Saturday. The 21-man roster ranged from 1969 Boston State College graduate Wayne Starkey to 2014 graduate Travis Daniel. After the game, we were able to catch up with some of the players to talk about the success of this year's team and the significance of playing with other alums. A feeling of camaraderie, as you said, just to see Everyone here played on UMass Boston's hockey team at one point over the last 20, 30 years. Uh, we go back to when this rink just uh, first opened. We, we literally sat here and watched the ice freeze the first time and uh, played on it. And it, it's, it's just started a great tradition and uh, it hasn't been better. And, and the, con the, the uh, skill level just keeps getting better, getting better and better. And it's great to see to see it expand. We're in the old, sh the new shirt gives me a whole new feeling of belonging to a big new school. Uh, Boston State had about two buildings. This place is an unbelievable campus. To be part of this is a big, big deal. I really appreciate being invited. You know, it's a, it's a pretty huge honor to be able to get uh, some of the guys from Boston State and guys from UMass Boston, newer guys and older guys, to bridge that gap between the two schools and, and to really indulge in the rich history that the, the program has to offer. Um, you know, with the 1981-82 championship uh, up until, you know, right now where we're competing every year for ECAC uh, East Championship, you know, so it's a, it's a huge honor to have everybody back together and kind of meet guys from future, uh, past and present. Um, I remember my sophomore year seeing this game being played. I mean, you know, hoping that w when we got to this point that we could kind of get out here and have some fun, meet some of the older guys and um, just kind of strap back on with five or six of us that we all played with together. Um, you know, it's a once, in a, once a year type thing, and, and um, it's just it's a lot of fun. Yeah, really impressive, you know, like Keith said. Uh, we were like little kids when the rink first opened, all looking over the edge, watching the ice, couldn't wait to get on it. We used to play games at 10.30 at Boston Arena against Bunker, Community College, Bunker Hill Community College and, and would lose, too. So, I mean, the skill level now, what Coach Pete has done here is really awesome, makes us all very, very proud, you know, to, to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, it really has evolved in, in a sense that the type of kind of players that are brought in now, um, guys like me, Jimmy, um, the 13 guys that were my senior class, we're all just kind of, um, coach used to say, you know, sweatpants type of guys. I mean, now they're very skilled guys. Um, they move the puck so well, and it's just the, the type of player that's brought in here now. It really built a culture where, you know, those top-notch recruits, they really want to come here and, and make a difference. It's awesome because we, you know, in a small way, I think we all feel a part of that. We all want to see the name do well, the Beacons go forward, and uh, so it, I think it, their success uh, shines a good light on all of us. The men's ice hockey team went on to earn a 6-1 victory over Skidmore College Saturday afternoon in front of the alums, improving to a program best 6-0. UMass Boston will be back in action this weekend when they travel to Wesleyan University and Trinity College. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Haley Dutton. Back live in Boston, eight minutes until we drop the puck for the third period. 3-1 Beacons in front. Let's take a look at the stats through two periods here. Now as UMass Boston has certainly controlled the action, you can see shots certainly in favor of the Beacons, not just in that period, but the whole game. The overall stats, 32 shots for UMass Boston and just 12 for the University of Southern Maine. Has anyone stood out to you in particular, Carl, through these first two periods that maybe we can preview for one of our top stars later on in the game? We will have three with an interview with head coach Peter Belisle as after the game as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kit Sitterly, he's been, all, he's been all over the place out there. The guy's been getting pucks to the net. He's flying around. He's got a goal and an assist already. He's playing great out there. Well, we've got a couple of minutes. 
As we can check out what's going on around Beaconville, another reminder that the UMass Boston Indoor Track and Field Open is going on right now at the Reggie Lewis Center. You can check out the coverage right here on beaconsathletics.com and tune in to our very own Seth Lorensky, who is also the producer of this broadcast, calling the action from Roxbury, Massachusetts. Speaking of games around Beaconville, let's take a look at what the men's basketball team was able to do against St. Joe's in their last game. A pretty impressive start to the season for the men's hoops team. Just came off an impressive upset of ranked MIT. So both winner teams having quite the start to 2014-15. Joseph knifing through the floater gets the friendly down. Dean Anderson talking to a deep three and nothing but net. Eye draws contact. It was stripped though. They say by Joseph. Now McAfee another three and hits. The Deacons have not been able to connect on many of their three pointers. Dean Anderson. Adina Chaps it back out. Joseph along two and hits. Inside, ball knocked out of the hands of Otway. Great job by Medina to flip it back to Freeman. Medina to the free throw line. Across, Young throws it down. Two on two. Joseph back out. Medina, three ball on the way. No good. Rebound underneath by Freeman. Goes back up. And St. Joseph back on top. Young with the answer. Around the zone, open from beyond the arc. Medina for three. Yes. Inside, Agnor puts it up on the line. Edwards takes the three. And the pass along the baseline. And we get the ball back. Now puts up the three in the corner. It's 33 to 25. Differential. And Young forces the turnover. Quick pass up to Joseph, tips it to Young, and the Beacons take the lead. I think just about everybody thought that one would go in. Why not? D. Anderson, a three and nothing. 45 to go, Joseph, the jumper. Yes. Up to Joseph. Joseph inside. Twenty to go. Four minutes to go until hockey resumes. We'll take a quick commercial break and come back with the third period right after this on the Beacons Broadcast Network. My name is Allie Greenberg. I'm an ice hockey player here. I'm a junior, majoring in human services, and I'm part of the Key for Hope Foundation. We recycle the keys and stock food pantries with the money. I wanted to bring this foundation to the athletic department, and I believe we can end hunger starting at UMass Boston. I got started with the Key for Hope Foundation due to my father. He's the one who founded this program. I said, what can I do? with a classroom environment giving back. And everybody's got an old key, and keys are made of brass, and brass is a recyclable commodity. And thinking about how many children are in a school system and how far we can go with taking this to do something right for humanity, I started a foundation called Key for Hope, feeding others uh, with the collecting of keys. In two and a half years, we collected over half a million keys. And I'm excited about this whole opportunity because you know what? 
One key may not seem like much to most people, but when you collect the masses of keys that we've collected, it shows that there is an ability for people to get together and create what I'm considering our hunger fighting opportunity. About a hundred seconds to go before the third period starts up as the Beacons look to hold on to and or extend this 3-1 lead they have over the University of Southern Maine who has shown some signs of potential improvement down the road but currently looking at a 1-7 record. They're currently 0-6 in conference play as the Beacons are about set to retake the ice. We've seen UMass Boston be not satisfied, Carl, with early leads. Certainly that 15-3 win over UMD comes to mind. Do you expect them to come out here and try to score as many goals as possible, or will they sit back a bit and just keep USM off the board, you think? Um, I don't think they're going to be sitting back at all. you got to go out there and go full tilt. Uh, keep, keep pounding shots on net. Keep playing physical. If they keep up the way they're playing right now, they should be fine. They should be able to tack on a few more goals. And, I mean, smooth sailing from there. Again, the scoring started for the Beacons halfway through the first period. Mike Kuhn scored his sixth goal of the season with assists from Bucco and Milam. Then Kit Sitterly scored seven minutes into the second period. His seventh goal of the year, assists from Haverstrom and Finger. Then it was Frankie D'Augustine who made it 3-0. His goal was his fourth of the year, assisted by Sitterly and Mason. And then Zach Dymock was able to respond for the Huskies at 15-39 in the second. His second goal of the season was assisted by Klippenstein and Guimond. Set to go for third period action. The Beacons now going left to right in the blue and white. USM right to left in the dark blue, white, and gold uniforms. Puck dropped and the faceoff won quickly by Bucco. The Beacons possess right away. 20 minutes away from a perfect first half of the season. Cornell backhands one towards the Husky line. It's knocked ahead by Bucco. Tracked down by Kuhn. Good to see him back out there after missing the latter half of that second period. That's what Carl pointed out. So hopefully he's healthy and ready to go. Long pass over towards Gimond at the far wall. Winds up with Cornell. The former Northeastern Husky finds Josh Haverstrom at center ice. This is Bucco. Slips past one defender, Stephen Bucco, looking for a backhand pass. Nearly connected with Kuhn, but just out of his reach. And it's cleared towards the neutral zone. Beacons will come off for a change here with Boyd and Bishop out there as blue liners. Milam McIntyre and the man with that interception, Colin Larkin, has the forward line. Larkin tried to sneak one through for McIntyre, but couldn't connect with him. Sweeps one over. P. Mack gets it right back. Centering pass for Milam, but it deflects out towards the blue line. And back the other way comes Brett Norman. Out skates Bishop. His quick shot is gloved by Faust. And he'll hang on. You can see that Peter Belial switched up the lines a little bit here through uh through Nate on this second line with Pete, Pete McIntyre and uh, Larkin. And uh, saw Josh Haverstrom out on the first line with Mike Kuhn and Stephen Bucco. We'll see what, what, what else is in store with the rest of these lines. Haven't seen a ton of changes game to game in the lines from Peter Belial, but you're right, a couple of switches here for the third period. Miller off the faceoff win, goes D to D for Beckwith. He dumps one in, hoping to find Magliano, but no luck. Loose puck, it's a foot race. And taken down is Larkin. Puck squirted over the blue line, offside, because Larkin was down on the ice. Bring a face off towards the neutral zone dot. Another line change for the Beacons, and now we see what line Frankie D'Augustine is on. He's out there now with Kit Sitterly and Jeremy Finger. Yeah, Kit Sitterly and uh, Frankie D'Augustine, they've been playing together for years. Uh, freshman and sophomore year, they were line mates, so it's good to see them back together. They've got good chemistry. A minute and a half into the final period as Maciag launches one towards the net from the blue line. 
Finger races after it. It's picked up by Bishop streaking in from the blue line. Knocked out towards the neutral zone. Puck gets knifed away by Alex Toby. Around for Beckwith. He bats that one out towards the blue line. Kept in with a kick of the skate by Mason. As Sitterly nearly had that puck at the circle, but it's intercepted. This is Pantalone now from blue line to blue line. He goes trying to go one on three. Gets hip checked that time by Mason, and he draws a penalty. Now Toby back to the blue line. Matson. Extra skater on, six on five for USM. One-time shot, knocked around, still loose in the crease, and USM can't put it home. That was all alone with an open net, but neither Husky charging the net, Brad McGovern, nor Zach Dymock could put home the second goal for the Huskies, so the Beacon survived, but low goal on the PK. And you see Dymock with his head to the ceiling, thinking, how did we not score that chance? But still two minutes with a man up. And this is Dymock, who scored earlier, sends one on. Faust with one save, still loose in the crease, taken away by Daly, who stops and turns one up for Crawford. He'll walk over the blue line. A backhand pass won't count. There's the lead skater. McStravick was offsides. Good play by Albie Daly right there to be patient with the puck and stop and take a look around, try to make an offensive chance by getting that puck up to Andrew Crawford. Still a good minute 45 left on the power play for USM. They're one for five with a man up in this game. Dimex first goal came with a man advantage in the second period. This is McGovern, goes up top for Klippenstein, tries to send it right back, but McGovern lost the footing and hits the ice. Now Cornell whiffed on a backhand pass and worked out for him. He frees up some space and whips it all the way down the ice. 1-10 to go in the power play, 16-40 left in the final period. Brett Norman turns away from Nate Milam. Good job by Milam to keep the pressure on. He gets the puck back, squirts one through the slot, but no beacon is there to get it. It's picked up by Bannerman. Now Kuhn pokes one away. Nearly had a chance to free up Milam, but instead it's taken by Norman. Over the blue line, left point, spins away from Bishop, trying to send it back in behind the net, but he collides with the referee. Still, though, this is Beckwith who has some space. Gets it down low, but right back it comes to Norman. Re-entry pass for Bannerman. Centers towards the slot, but it's knocked right back at him by Boyd. Bannerman trying to find some space. Still 20 seconds left on the power play. Back it goes for Matson. At the circle now, Brett and Norman up top. Matson gets it right back to Norman. His slap shot well wide. And around the other side it goes. Walking out towards the circle is Pantolone as a penalty clock expires. Pass banked off the corner boards. On the ice comes Mason. He quickly comes off for Larkin. Breakaway chance here. Nate Milam in on net. He shoots. He's denied by Shapiro. But Milam sticks with it. Kuhn wraps around into the corner. To the right of the circle, turns and sends one in where Larkin can pick it up. Milam thought the pass was going to the point, and it's picked off. Torres got his stick lifted, but the loose puck goes to Alex Toby, who comes off the ice and leaves the puck for Lauren Miller. Shot from the tough angle on the opposite circle is sealed off by Faust, and he'll freeze it up. Faust has looked good this game. He's really square with the puck. You know a goalie's having a good game when everything's hitting him right in the chest. And from... from uh, from Faust, I mean, that's what we've been seeing today. He's making everything look very easy out there. 14.47 to go in this one. Colin Larkin finds some space. He's got McIntyre in the slot. He'll shoot it himself, but hits the pipes. I count five different posts hit by the Beacons in this one. And that's rounding down. As DeAugustine tried to center one, but... Wound up with a puck behind the net. He does have McIntyre over to his left, but lost the puck in the slot trying to find Larkin. Frankie sticks with it. 
Now P. Mack finds Larkin, he scores! Colin Larkin streaking into the slot, goes five hole on Shapiro, and the Beacons regain a three goal lead, it's four to one. You know, I really like the chemistry that Larkin and Peter McIntyre have. They're very similar players. They, they even look the same on the ice when they're skating around. But, um, I mean, they're both very good playmakers, very good passers, and uh, both of them can put the puck in the net. They both have really quick shots, accurate shots, and, I mean, that's, that's what you need if you want to win games. Faceoff goes directly to Shapiro, who just covers up. Four to one, Beacons in front, 14 minutes, 10 seconds to go in regulation. Buko against Guimond at the dot. Face off one by Guimond, but Kuhn able to come away with it in the corner. We're going to give both McIntyre and DeAugustine the assists. As, as Haverstrom cycles around. Battling forward in the corner. Up top, a slap shot deflected into the corner. Now with 13.30 to go. Maciag wraps this one around the glass, and now Kuhn with it. Walking behind the boards. Daly, or Buko rather, looking for a teammate. He'll take it himself to the slot. Skips the puck around a couple defenders. Now to the point for Maciag, who banks one off the wall and is able to find Kuhn, who chips one over for Buko. Beacon's in no hurry here to force any bad shots on net to create a counterattack opportunity for the Huskies. Now it comes to Dymock, who's unable to clear thanks to Mason. Mason wrist one from the top of the circle, but knocked down by Dymock. And Dymock has it once again. He will loft this one to center ice where it's picked up by Maciag. A quick change attempt here by the Huskies. Maciag weaving through one defender but couldn't get it cleanly by McGovern. And it's taken right back by USM. Lucas Brennan was not the intended target on that pass but comes away with it regardless. Tried to feather one through but it deflects off of Larkin or Boyd rather and winds up being an easy save for Faust. Yeah, that was a good shift there by... Uh by Steven Buko, he's had a great game. He's rung the post three times, uh, unable to get on the stat sheet so far, but I mean, he's just playing great out there. He's one of those guys who can slow the game down with his stick handling abilities, and it, it really like it really uh, puts, puts the defensive team on their heels because they don't know where he's going to go with the puck. I just saw a kid literally working hard to get the puck over the blue line. His entry pass was deflected well into the netting, off of a USM stick, so the Beacons will have a face-off in the offensive zone. It'll be Bannerman against the Augustine. Frankie can't win the face-off. Sitterly tries to pinch in, but USM comes away. Finger gets the puck right back. Nice skating there from Sitterly to lay the hammer down on Beckwith on his way to the blue line. Down goes Finger. Sitterly still fighting for it. Now it goes up ahead where Boyd flicks it towards goal. Shapiro makes a short hop catch. And with 11.40 to go in regulation, he will freeze the puck. 4-1, Beacons in front. They'll get a faceoff in the Huskies' end. Sitterly has just been doing it all tonight. He's getting pucks to the net. You just saw that big hit that he threw at the blue line. I mean, this kid is, can play. He, he knows how to skate with the best of them. Kick save there off the quick shot from Colucci. Got it through traffic, but not past Shapiro. With speed, here comes Lorne Miller. Hands one off behind him towards Magliano. He had that one chopped away from behind. And this is Cornell behind his own net, able to walk out in front of the net. Almost turned it over at the blue line, but fortunately for him, it just snuck past the line. And it would have been offsides against USM. Pass ahead for McStravick. It's out of his reach. It has to be controlled by the goaltender. So we get another offensive zone faceoff coming for the Beacons. They were up 3-0. And 
And give up a goal to Dymock in the final five minutes of the second period, but able to regain this three-goal lead. With a goal from Colin Larkin, his third of the season. Entered the weekend in the upper ranks of freshmen nationally in points per game. 16, or number 16 ranked in terms of points per game for freshmen. 1.12 on average. Tic-tac-toe passing across the line for Larkin, but couldn't get it cleanly. This is Dymock, left point, quick wrist shot, paddled away by Faust. Still the Huskies stay with it behind the net. Guimond shovels one in, where he finds Dymock, turns away from Mason, slips one through Larkin, but Colin recovers and gets a stick on it. Nice job to chip one up ahead. He's able to find Milam and gets it right back. Larkin over the blue line, but offsides is the call. Yeah, McIntyre and Milam charging hard toward the net, but the whistle blew well before they could develop that play. Halfway through the third. The Beacons playing in their final game in the calendar year. January 4th, the Codfish Bowl against Connecticut College will be their next game. Two-time defending champs of the Codfish Bowl, the Beacons men's ice hockey team. Hadn't won it since 2007, then won in 2013 and last year. Long pass for Torres out of his reach. Buco in front of us taps the pass towards Haverstrom, but Josh can't corral it. This is Torres. Turns around at the blue line, finds a teammate, Gallo, who lost an edge, and here come the Beacons. Buko slides one through for Kuhn, but it's knocked away by Matson, who got a stick in there. Buko tries to sneak one through for Haverstrom, but it gets past his stick, and it's taken by Boyd back into Beacon's end. Now Buko. As Haverstrom streaking to his right, he finds him. Josh Haverstrom gliding in. Shot goes off the side of the net. It's picked up by Bishop, who turns and tried to leave one back for Haverstrom, but no luck there. It comes to Buko, who takes a hit, falls down, and a chance for an odd man rush if USM can hurry. It'll wind up being a three-on-three -three over the blue line. Shot from the point, knocked around off the chest of Faust, and a good play there by Kuhn to get out of trouble. Buko applying pressure behind the net on Lauren Miller. Miller finds space. He'll take it coast to coast, or as long as the Beacons will let him go. Crawford knocks it away. And it's sent in by Buko, who slams his stick on the ice on his way back to the bench. 8.40 to go in regulation. Cornell fighting for it. Chips it ahead towards Augustine, who can't get the stick down. He did have Sitterly open in the slot, but no luck. Buck comes loose at the circle. The Augustine has it on the backhand. Across it goes to Crawford. Zips one in. Open net. Sitterly scores. A ricochet right to the circle. Kit Sitterly finds the opening, and he's got a two-goal game. Yeah, it's Sitter's, Sitterly's day today. The puck bounces right onto his tape. He's got a wide open net there. He hammers it home, and that's two goals for him tonight. 5-1 UMass Boston. Eight minutes, 19 seconds to go in the third period. And this score is moving towards what maybe most fans expected looking at the records of these two teams. 9-0 Beacons, 1-7 Huskies. Yeah, I'll tell you, though, Southern Maine ha didn't play bad those first two periods. I, I mean, they, they got a few chances on the attack. They kind of got in the heads of the Beacons and made them draw a couple penalties. I mean, overall... Not a bad game considering who you're playing. I think the turning point was that five on three in the second period when we saw some frustration from freshman goaltender Kyle Shapiro. The talent is certainly there, and it's so much to ask for a freshman to try to take on Babson yesterday, number three in the country, and UMass Boston today, number six in the nation, and soon to rise, I'm sure, after this successful weekend. The Beacons have not looked back since. There's a hit off the puck by Maciak. He'll get called for that once the Beacons touch up. Six on five here. Rister goes very high. Maciak can't touch up, though. And it goes back to Magliano. Now the Beacons able to stop the play. 
Interference is the call on the sophomore from Plymouth, Michigan. Maciag hits the penalty box, and with 7.28 to go in the game, it'll be a power play yet again for Southern Maine. They're one for six on the afternoon. Yeah, it's got to be tough for these ECAC East teams who come down here. They uh, Every weekend, the tr teams travel together, so you go and you play Babson one night, and then you've got UMass Boston the next. I mean, that's tough for any team to handle. Shapiro handles that puck. Left it behind, and he's able to find Klippenstein. Dimick with it. Number is on the rush for USM for the time being anyway. Guimond flicks it ahead toward the corner but can't get there. Big hit at the blue line. No whistle blown as Daly hit the ice. It's picked up by McGovern. Brad McGovern over the blue line. Offsides. A good call by the near side official. And a very late hit put on by Cornell. He lays the hammer down on McGovern. One twenty-three left on the penalty clock. Just under seven minutes to go in the game. Yeah, I'm wondering if, if that kid said something to Cornell earlier. I mean, he really threw, it, threw him down there with some authority. I wouldn't doubt it. As Milam sends the face off over towards Finger right below us. Jeremy whacks that one over the blue line. Another big hit behind the net. That'll be a beacon penalty upcoming. Still six and a half minutes to go in this one as Norman races over the blue line. He gets leveled by Milam, and we're going to have a host of penalties coming up against UMass Boston. Still down is Norman. That was a monstrous hit. Yeah, right there you see the strength of Nate. They call him Tornado because, he I mean, he'll come in here and he'll destroy everyone in his sight. Norman went flying into the boards. Good to see him back up on one knee at least, breathing very heavily, and he's waving off the trainer, but quite obviously slow to get up. There's going to be some paperwork to do to figure out just how many penalties there are for the Beacons. One was called on the other end of the ice that started the initial six-on-four advantage for USM, and then... I thought a second penalty was called as Milam is going to have to lead this game. Yeah, one thing you notice, I mean, Nate made that hit behind the net in the other end, and then you find him down in the uh, Beacon's defensive end making another big hit. But, I mean, sure enough, though, he's going to be kicked out of the game for his hit down in, in the, his offensive zone. It was from behind, and then you see that big hit right there. It's a dangerous hit, but, I, I mean, I like the physicality. A four-goal lead for the Beacons, and they've certainly played well to deserve this lead. But with five minutes on the penalty clock for Milam's transgressions and a minute four left on the Maciag interference, the Beacons will likely be a man down until there are 90 seconds left in the third period. If USM was hoping for a momentum swing, they've got it here. <coughs> Still a long delay as the referees are sorting out all these penalties. And again, with a five-minute major like we just saw, no matter how many goals USM scores, there's still going to be a power play for them unless they commit a penalty or until that five-minute clock winds down. We saw the Beacons take advantage on opening night against UMass Dartmouth. They scored four times on a five-minute major penalty. They certainly know just how much something like this can change the momentum of a game. And now with all the deliberation here at Tenor Ice between the referees, Peter Belial is calling his guys over to discuss what's to come on the bench. Yeah, I'm sure he's telling them to be a lot more disciplined. You can't be taking any more penalties. I mean, uh, having Nate get kicked out of the game, he's a big impact player for the team. Um, I mean, they're just going to go out there. they got to got to kill it off for the rest of the game now. 6.32 to go in the third period. We'll take a 30-second break and come back as we're getting this thing sorted out on the Beacons Broadcast Network. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. 
And for me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school. But every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. The official ruling against Milam is going to be a game misconduct in five minute major for boarding. As this will be one minute of a five on three for USM, and then after that, four minutes of a five on four. As far as we know, right now there are three beacons in the penalty box. Milam got called for two penalties on that last sequence as a shot from Dymock deflects wide. A four-goal lead right now for the Beacons. That could change very quickly here in the third period. Top of the circle, McGovern goes back up top, Klippenstein. Dymock tried to send one through, but Cornell deflects it up into the air, and a good job by Daly to knock that one back into the USM end. Indirect pass, banked ahead to Bannerman. He gets leveled with the rear end of Kuhn. He chases this one down at the blue line down in front of us, but Klippenstein was able to pick it up and reset the offense. Eight seconds left in the first beacon penalty. 5.30 to go in regulation. First penalty has expired, but two more minutes on the clock for the first Milan penalty, so still... A five on three for two more minutes at least as this one hits the crossbar off the stick of Klippenstein. He gets it right back at the point. Takes a slap shot, goes down low to McGovern, right back. A wrist shot deflected in the air off of Kuhn, who took that one off his hand it looked like, but a good job to deny that scoring opportunity. And this one's cleared down by Bishop. So 90 seconds until the Beacons can get a fourth skater out there. And then after that, It'll be two minutes of five on four. That was a good shift by Mike Kuhn. He was getting in the lanes. He was beating people to the puck. Um, just a great job overall to uh, kill this penalty. Five on threes are tough. You got to be mentally tough. You got to be able to know the lanes of the puck, where the shots are going to go, and be able to get it out when you get the chance. Good keep in there by Gallo to prevent a breakaway chance as Mason was ready for it. It goes up to Matson, winds up for a slap shot, goes to Gallo instead. One of the tri captains goes back to Matson. He's able to find Norman, who took that big hit from Milan just moments ago. Now Gallo turns and backhands one towards the corner boards, but instead it goes out to Daly, who is able to knock it away before heading back to the bench. He gets a Quick round of applause from Peter Belisle on the bench as once again UMass Boston does well to keep it away from the blue line. That time McStravick gets it towards the neutral zone. As his pants alone leaves one over for Lucas Brandon who couldn't pull the trigger on that shot. 15 seconds to go in the first Milam penalty and the second of this particular sequence for the Beacons. Puck taken away by Gallo. Pass across the box off the post. Brett Norman had a mile wide opening to score, but he couldn't do it as Daniel Matson missed with a slap shot. Free puck knocked all the way down. Nicely done there as the Beacons take a big sigh of relief. They clear the danger. Three, ten to go as UMass Boston's got four skaters back on the ice. 90 seconds left in this very long power play for USM, they've yet to score as this puck is knocked around in the slot. Loose puck in front of Faust, a turnaround shot from Gamond is denied. From circle to circle it goes, McGovern. High slot, Kippenstein winds up, his shot deflected high. Dymuk toward the circle for Bannerman. Looking for a teammate, exploring his options, he finds Gamond who Gets it to McGovern, now back up top for Klippenstein. McGovern again, walking toward the circle. His shot deflected by Crawford with 55 seconds to go in the penalty. Looked like Crawford took that one off the palm right there. We're seeing a lot of block shots, even with this comfortable lead for the Beacon. So important, of course, on the power play. And an extended one of that as McGovern sends one down. 
Bannerman looking to wrap around. Kuhn gets to it first, though. Leaves it back for Crawford, and Andrew sends it all the way down with just half a minute left on this power play. Dimex skates into the puck. Over the blue line, gets dispossessed by Cornell. Great stick there. And the Northeastern Husky formerly able to clear it away where Daly has it at his own blue line, wisely sends it all the way through. Kuhn is there to apply some pressure with just five seconds left on the penalty. Kyle Shapiro not at all happy to slam his stick down in net to let his team know the power play has come to an end. And the Beacons able to hold strong. Five minutes a man down with three and a half of those minutes being a five-on-three disadvantage, still able to keep this a 5-1 game. Yeah, that was a great job by the penalty killing there. I mean, you've seen it all year. They 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 stop about 90% of their uh, penalty kills, and I mean, they, they've just done great this whole season with that. 1.18 left. Just time to wind this clock down. Buko backhands one all the way across for McIntyre, who skates just a bit over the puck, able to find it between his skates, though, and returns the favor for Buko, dumps it all the way in. Buko's pass up ahead to Bishop is picked off by Torres. Torres' pass is taken away as Bishop banks one up ahead. Now this is Crawford skating over the blue line. He gets dispossessed, a good poke check by Gallo. Now this is Torres, two on one for USM with Toby in the slot. Torres takes a shot and a shoulder save by Faust. Whistle blows, 41 seconds to go. A hand pass called and a 5-1 beacon lead with under a minute left. Larkin against Pantalone. Pantalone wins it. Quick shot, but Faust is ready. A couple of good saves here in the waning seconds of the game. 38.6 seconds to go. Yeah, Faust really came out here and shut the door in the third period. I mean, any chances that have come, he's been right in front of it, saving him with his chest. He's just had a great game today. Turnaround shot there by Coda, unsuccessful. Deflection in front of Faust goes up high. And the Beacons control behind their own net. This is Mason walking it out. Able to find Buko. Puck got knocked behind him. Tried to lift the stick of Waghorn. And Waghorn just dumps this one around. Cornell. Backhands over to McIntyre. Saucers one up into the air. In hopes of finding Buko, but no luck. Coda sends one off of Mason. It goes to the far corner. And McIntyre will wind this clock out. With a 5-1 win. In the final day of the calendar year, UMass Boston has completed a perfect first half. 10-0 overall, 6-0 in conference. They're undefeated, entering their next game on January 4th and nearly a month to reflect on a tremendous start to the 2014-15 season. A four-goal win. Great job from Billy Faust in net. A couple of goals for Kit Sitterly. A lot to... Digest in this game, Carl will have plenty of time to do so during the post-game show, but what's your initial reaction to a victory like this for the Beacons? Well, it's good. I mean, coming into this weekend, they're expected to get four points. They go out and do just that. They get the four points. Um, I mean, they came out in this third period and showed that they're, they're the sixth best team in the nation. I mean, they're proving themselves day in and day out. They keep working hard. They keep winning games. I, I mean, these guys have potential that they could make a run for the national championship this year. We'll take a quick commercial break, but stay tuned. We've got full stat breakdowns, our top three stars, an interview with head coach Peter Belisle, and the final word from Carl Poss coming up next on the Beacons Broadcast Network. My name is Allie Greenberg. I'm an ice hockey player here. I'm a junior majoring in human services and I'm part of the Key for Hope Foundation. We recycle the keys and stock food pantries with the money. I wanted to bring this foundation to the athletic department and I believe we can end hunger starting at UMass Boston. I got started with the Key for Hope Foundation due to my father. He's the one who founded this program. I said, what can I do with a classroom environment giving back? And everybody's got an old key and keys are made of brass and brass is a recyclable commodity and thinking about how many children are in a school system and how far we can go with taking this to 
do something right for humanity. I started a foundation called Key for Hope, feeding others uh, with the collecting of keys. In two and a half years, we collected over half a million keys. And I'm excited about this whole opportunity because you know what? One key may not seem like much to most people, but when you collect the masses of keys that we've collected, it shows that there is an ability for people to get together and create what I'm considering our hunger fighting opportunity. Paris changed my life, and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in, and a woman in a long gown, and it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty and style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. Today. We, we want, want you on our team. team. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school, but every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. The University of Massachusetts Boston, with its scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III sports are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, then I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division III school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. We'll take a look at the final stats as we're back live in Boston. Tyler Murray and Carl Paz, glad you stuck with us for the postgame show. And what jumps out to me is despite the lopsided score, 5-1 in favor of UMass Boston, Southern Maine actually won the faceoff battle 40-27. to That certainly will serve as a moral victory for them, but the Beacons in other aspects of the game clearly had the upper hand. Carl, what did you see on the statute? Yeah, I mean, you see that 
the Beacons took seven penalties. Um, Southern Maine was unable to capitalize, except for on that one occasion. Um, like to see that the Beacons got one goal on their on their three power play chances. Um, uh, once again, Beacons putting up a lot of shots. Yesterday they put up over 60 shots, and today doing doing just as well, almost putting up 40. I mean, the, the more shots you take, the more likely you are to get some more goals. So. We'll take another quick commercial break, and don't go anywhere, folks, because we've got the most anticipated portion of our postgame show next to the Peter Belisle interview, our three stars. Who's going to get them? You'll find out next on the Beacons Broadcast Network. My name is Allie Greenberg. I'm an ice hockey player here. I'm a junior, majoring in human services, and I'm part of the Key for Hope Foundation. We recycle the keys and stock food pantries with the money. I wanted to bring this foundation to the athletic department, and I believe we can end hunger starting at UMass Boston. I got started with the Key for Hope Foundation due to my father. He's the one who founded this program. I said, what can I do with a classroom environment giving back? And everybody's got an old key, and keys are made of brass, and brass is a recyclable commodity. And thinking about how many children are in a school system and how far we can go with taking this to do something right for humanity. I started a foundation called Key for Hope, feeding others uh, with the collecting of keys. In two and a half years, we collected over half a million keys. And I'm excited about this whole opportunity because you know what? One key may not seem like much to most people, but when you collect the masses of keys that we've collected, it shows that there is an ability for people to get together and create what I'm considering our hunger fighting opportunity. Paris changed my life, and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in, and a woman in a long gown, and it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty and style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey, and that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. Today. We, we want, want you on our team. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school. But every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. The University of Massachusetts Boston, with its scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III sports are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Five to one, your final. And now we will reveal the three stars of the game. Pretty cut and dry, I'd say. A one-sided performance from the Beacons. Carl, what'd you see? Yeah, uh, that line with Kit Sitterly and Frank D'Augustine, it's uh, Belial just made that line today. Uh, the two have been playing together for years. Um, and you could see it today. The chemistry was right there, right where they left off. Kit Sitterly putting up two goals and getting an assist. 
Uh, Frankie D'Augustine tallying up a goal and getting two, assi two assists. And then uh, Billy Foss with the third star. He, 25 saves. Uh, it's his third start of the year. Got, uh, big, got a big win for the guys. And what more can you ask from him? We'll take one more quick break. Very quick, we've got Peter Belisle heading up to the press box right now. We'll talk to him in just a moment, so stay tuned. We'll talk to head coach Peter Belisle and wrap things up next on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Okay, folks, we're here with head coach Peter Belisle, and again, congratulations on a great win. Let's talk first about the overall impressions you had on this game. Maybe another instance where the start was a little slow. They looked great to come out of the gate, but the scoring didn't happen until later on. But overall, it looked like a pretty solid performance. Yeah, I, I, thought, uh, I thought we played well at times, uh, and then I thought, you know, we took some shifts off at times. Uh, but overall, I agree with you. I thought it, it was a great effort. It was a big kill at the end. I thought that was uh, phenomenal on the, you know, we had a three-minute five-on-three where the guys really battled and killed off that. Uh, and uh, I thought a penalty kill was great. Uh, we got a power play goal tonight, which was nice to see. Uh, so uh, overall, uh, you know, pretty happy. We saw you change up the lines a little bit during the third period. Worked out for a couple of goals. Colin Larkin had a nice tally. Um, what was the reason for that? Why did you make the changes? I just felt they, it felt like the guys were getting a little frustrated. It was kind of two nights of like, you know, we're putting so many shots on net and uh, we weren't, uh, you know, scoring as much as we would have liked. So I was like, you know what, we're going to, let's just mix it up a little bit. And, and I just changed a few guys uh, to see if that could spark something. So we tried that for the third. Got about a month to go into your next game, Cod Fishbowl opener on January 4th. How much do you get to talk to these guys and work with them in practice, if at all, between now and your next game? Yeah, so, you know, the whole country is kind of in the same boat. We get that long break. Uh, for us, we, we'll be able to have one more week of practice, and then we break for exams. So you've got – and then we don't come back, I think, until the 30th. Uh, so we'll come back. We'll practice a full week before the codfish. But – they're going to have two full weeks off, so we just talked about that. Uh, you know, hopefully they can take their gear home and skate with their high school team or their old junior team and just to keep their legs or something and, uh, you know, make sure they're, you know, going home and staying in shape. Uh, that's It's going to be tough, and it's that second half to kind of build it back up again. It's like a whole new season. Well, it's been a lot of fun to watch, Coach. Congratulations on a great first half of the season, and best of luck in 2015. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. This is Coach Peter Belisle. And, folks, we'll take a quick break and come on back to wrap things up. Stay tuned. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. Set to say goodbye here for the 2014 calendar year anyway in UMass Boston men's hockey. At Pekin's Ice Arena, the final score today, UMass Boston 5, the University of Southern Maine 1. I want to give a special thanks to the debutante Carl Poss in his first ever broadcast experience. Did a wonderful job. Can't wait to have him back on the airwaves, and that will certainly be very soon. And a special thanks as well to the rest of our crew, Seth Orensky, Carl Poss, Jose Pena. Ryan Augustine, Charles Lapaglia, Kyle Thibodeau, Brian Fiella, Jason Scholish, Dave 
Wahlberg, Charles Lai, and the man behind everything, of course, Jose Payne, the man to my left. My name is Tyler Murray. I want to thank you all for tuning in all 2014 long. Enjoy the holiday break, and don't forget to check out the final leg of Seth Orensky's track broadcast over at the Jerry Lewis Center over on BeaconsAthletics.com. Happy holidays, everybody.